Okay, this video is uh, 9 out of 10, part 2. And uh, I'm taking a passage that Jesus said in Luke 9, verse 50. And this passage is uh, recorded twice. And in Luke 9, 50, Jesus said... Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. Okay, so that's uh, where uh, John thought that they, a guy wasn't in their religious camp or their fundamentalist camp, and then we're not going to cooperate with him or whatever. And Jesus said, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. In Luke eleven twenty three, it seems that Jesus does the opposite or says the opposite. Where in Luke eleven twenty three, he says, "He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth." Okay, and so one he says, "He that is not against us is for us," and the other he says, "He that is not with me is against me." So which one's right? Okay, so in part one, I reveal that Luke 9 is uh, the, stand, the biblical reaction towards people in the matter of beliefs. Nine out of ten ain't bad. Eight out of ten ain't bad. Okay, and in the Luke 11, the biblical reaction is towards spirits, where nine out of ten isn't good. It is bad. Okay, where in spirits, you need to have 100% agreement in that idea. Okay, and so in this idea, I want to give you in this uh, part, I want to give you some of the sources that I've learned from throughout the years. Now, as I've mentioned, you know, I, uh, I uh, graduated from a, a public high school. Not, you know, I had a few, very few teachers that I knew or uh, they would professed to be Christians. Obviously, they did not teach anything about Christianity or the Bible in the school. OK, but uh, in fact, our school, my public school, had a Bible character as a mascot. But the character was the devil, <laughs> the red devil. What happened at separation church and state? You know, Satanism is a religion. And am I supposed to throw out everything, or are you supposed to throw out everything that you learned uh, in school if the teachers weren't Christians or weren't Bible believers? No, you take the truth and you throw out other things. You think, you uh, get some discretion, you learn some discretion. You weed out the truth from the air. Okay, and after school, hopefully you are a continual student until the day you die. And you're continually trying to learn thoughts, truths. And you might be surprised in some of the areas that you learn the, these truths from. Okay, so some of the sources that I've learned from, you know, uh, in Proverbs chapter 11, <clears throat> verse 14 it says, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. <clears throat> so you have a multiple sources of truth. You know, I like the uh, statement that there are six teachers, six of the best teachers in life are who, what, when, where, why, and how. And I also like the idea that everybody knows something I don't know. Hence, all men are my teachers. And so you can learn from any source. Now, my doctrinal viewpoints, as far as the Bible doctrinal viewpoints, I've learned the majority of them from Bible believers. I mean, King James Bible believers, but I've learned doctrinal ideas from others, you know, maybe Bible apostates or men that use the King James, but uh, were not taught to believe it or did not develop that idea of belief in it. So that my doctrine, the vast majority of it is, comes from a Bible believer. Now, in family principles, okay, learning ideas in family, uh, obviously from my own upbringing, from my own parents, I learned a lot of things, G wonderful things. I have wonderful parents, okay? And so you just 
live uh, some of the things that they taught you. Okay, and uh, but unfortunately, a lot of people doesn't have that kind of an upbringing. And I learned a lot from what was called the uh, America Training Institute or Advanced Training Institute of America. It was uh, hosted or the main uh, head over it was a fellow named Bill Gothard. I learned a lot of wonderful things from that ministry. Good music, good education. Uh, very weak on doctrine, but I already, my doctrine is pretty well settled through Bible believers. So you get a lot of wonderful family uh, education from that, but it's kind of not gone by the wayside, but uh, has sort of kind of gone to the contemporary realm, but you can still learn some good things from them. Another good family uh, source is, uh, you know, um, Mike and Debbie Pearl, wonderful uh, information you can get from Mike and Debbie Pearl. Uh, they have many books and things like that. Another good source, James Dobson has some good sources for Bible, uh, for family information. Not good sources for Bible information, but you can get some good uh, thoughts from them as far as conservative ideas for the family. In health, I'm a my wife and I study a lot of health. We've been studying health for years and years and years. And I'm 62, still playing uh, basketball at a high level, okay, and uh, seeing other folks. So evidently, by the grace of God, we're learning some things. But if you get into the health, uh, or if you go to a health food store, you might wonder where the... the uh, person keeps their broom, they probably flew in because uh, they are new agey or witchy a lot of times. Sure, the, the health industry, uh, the alternative health industry has some new agey or witchy type ideas, but so does the medical profession. I mean, come on, I mean, mind-altering drugs in the medical profession, you know, and all that stuff going on. You read the side effects on those things. The AMA uh, is not a trustworthy organization. They're just practicing medicine. They're not perfecting health. And so you, you learn from people who um, have lived a long life. Paul Bragg has got a lot of good information. Uh, Norman Walker is an, a good source for good information. I mean, Jesus said the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. Do you think uh, with this so-called pandemic, or shall we say planned-demic? Yeah, I'm going to listen to a guy named Fauci or Bill Gates. I mean, ha, ha, ha. I mean, these guys have not your health in mind. They have their personal agenda in mind. So you can learn a lot of good things in health, uh, researching, do a lot of research, experiment with your own body. They're not going to be Bible believers. They're not going to promote Christianity. But you can still get some, you know, the Bible is, you might be surprised, the Bible says a lot about health practices, what you can do for your own body, uh, what you need to give your body, the right nutrients, and your body will repair itself in many ways, okay? In law, okay, in the United States of America was, has many, a great heritage of Christianity, now, you're not told these things in a public school system. And so if you read history books, these history books are tainted. They are nothing more than the opinions of the editors who's recording what they say is history. No, they're recording their viewpoint of history. And that's why you need to go back and research the actual documents that the founding fathers wrote or the constitutions, America has a wonderful heritage of Christianity, where Christianity was the established religion, Protestant Christianity was the established religion of uh, North Carolina and South Carolina. I mean, it's in their constitutions. I learned a lot of health principles from a Lutheran, fine man. I mean, I hosted... Uh, uh, law classes, two weeks of law classes, eight hours a day, so 10 days, eight hours a day, uh, hosted six of those 
and then one advanced class, a man learned a lot of scripture in health train in a law training from a uh, a Lutheran. Attended his funeral where his pastor said, uh, you know, said, uh, you know, you got to be baptized to go to heaven. I mean, oh, yeah, right. I don't believe he believed that. Okay, we would have devotions before the health class. So he heard the gospel presentation from me personally on many occasions. But I learned some great truths from law classes from a Lutheran. I learned a lot about spiritual warfare. Not from Baptist, a little bit from Bible believers, but most Bible believers shun spiritual warfare like it's uh, like oil and water. I learned that from a former vampire. Yeah, a former vampire. Actually, living off of blood for over a year. Now, he's a saved man, Bible believer today. But uh, the Baptist or the fundamentalist, the funny mentalist, uh, they don't want to have this gentleman come to their church and teach. I mean, I've had him on many occasions. Learned a lot of wonderful things from him. Thank God I didn't have to go through some of those experiences. Very sheltered, on a, raised on a farm. But I've learned a lot of amazing things that uh, you might be surprised uh, the satanic ritual abuse that occurs around you or in the political arena that I learned from this uh, gentleman, from this brother in Christ, the spiritual warfare. Learned a lot of wonderful things from him. I learned archaeology. Archaeology from a a seven-day Adventist. Went to Israel on a couple occasions. Uh, with this man, had him in my church, a Seventh-day Adventist, confused on some of his doctrines, thought he was going to go into the tribulation. Uh, When we were in Israel, he had me on the tour teach about the preservation of the Word of God in the King James Bible. (laughs) Man, oh man, did that, I, I enjoyed doing it. He enjoyed it. The Jewish guide enjoyed it. My son enjoyed it. Everybody else on the tour after I gave that talk, about a 45 minute talk on the bus, most everybody else, uh, you know, uh, ignored me the rest of the tour. Sort of kind of strange, but I learned a lot of uh, good information about archaeology from this gentleman, Seventh-day Adventist. I mean, I was so grateful for the things I learned from him. I didn't argue with him about our differences of beliefs. I took what he had. He was older than I, like I'm going to tell him what to believe. If he wanted to discuss it, I'd be glad to discuss it with him. But he didn't choose to didn't want to. Yeah, it's not nothing for off me. Uh, you can get a lot of good music principles. Not from Bible believers. They're too busy with bluegrass or something like that. Um, but you get that, you know, from schools that may not be Bible believers. I learned a lot of good things from these folks on good music, good music principles where the uh, melody is accented, making melody in your hearts to the Lord, not this contemporary garbage that you got going on. Science and evolution, uh, ideas against the evolutionary theory you can get from Ken Ham. Now, he's not a Bible believer. He'll claim he is, but he's really not. But you can still get a lot of good information from these men. Kent Hovind, you can get a lot of good information from these men. Do I agree with them 100%? Of course not. I don't don't agree with myself a year ago from today. I hopefully grown in grace and disagree with myself maybe three weeks ago in some areas, a few areas where I've grown in grace. I learned uh, some geography about Israel. This might surprise some folks. A former Muslim got saved. At the time, he's a New King Jimmy guy. Uh, I actually had him at our church. Yeah, New King Jimmy guy. I gave him my reference Bible. We taught him a few things about the King James. Uh, He didn't accept it, but that's his choice. But we learned some things on, our, on uh, the geography of Israel. I, I changed a few of my viewpoints 
on biblical prophecy because of this gentleman? I mean, yeah, you take the good and throw out uh, the bad. You use some discretion. Uh, we we uh, have a gentleman in our area. He's in a contemporary Christianity, but he's self-defense. We've taken guns. <gasps> Ooh, gun shooting and self-defense classes. I've gotten my wife to take these classes, some of the ladies in our church, so if we're out in the street, I'm not worried about my wife. She knows what to do. Not that she's carrying a gun or anything, but she can use her hand. She knows where she needs to hit and claw and bite and scratch or whatever she needs to do to defend herself. Learn that from a Christian, not a Bible believer. You see, you can learn a lot of things from other folks. You take the truth. Truth is truth no matter who says it. And we have a great promise in the New Testament where the born-again believer has the promise of the Holy Ghost who comes in your body permanently. And it says in John 16, verse 13, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. You see, truth is truth no matter who says it, and an error is an error no matter who says it, even if he's your Christian hero. You see, one of the tools of Satan is that he can use good men to promote an error. Or he can use the good book to promote an error. That's right. I mean, the greatest tool of Satan is to use a Bible truth and pull it into a different age. Or use a Bible word and give it the wrong definition. I mean, a bunch of Calvinists... They're running around with their personal definitions of predestination and election. And if you just let the Bible define the own words, it's a very easy definition. And you could uh, bask in your self-righteousness and think that you're right when you're being led of Satan. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hey, if, if, if the Apostle Peter can speak by the inspiration of God in Matthew 16, where Jesus said flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, meaning God revealed it to him, and then four or five verses later, Jesus looked at the same man and said, get thee behind me, Satan. He got the words from Satan. He spoke by the inspiration of the devil in minutes. Who are you and I? Who are you and I? You see, a gracious reaction. I, you know, I'm amazed at how Christians behave in church where, oh, that preacher, I don't agree with what he just said. And then, and then make a scene, you know, drama comes up, drama. Make a big scene, okay, oh, I don't agree with you on this. Well, so hot. Did I expect you to? Whoa. And then they make a big scene, and then uh, they, because they made a fool out of themselves, they, they go to a different church. And, and as soon as they walk in the chore, door of the j- different church, there's already disagreements with belief, but they can't go back to the one because of the one area they disagreed with because they made a fool out of themselves. It's an amazing thing how people behave. You see, nine out of ten ain't bad. Don't take yourself so seriously. <laughs> gracious reaction with people and their knowledge of the truth. That's that's the biblical reaction you ought to have towards others. Nine out of ten, eight out of ten ain't bad. Seven out of ten ain't bad. Your focus is on the words. And truth is intermingled with error in this day and age because deception is rampant. And if you are sincerely seeking after the Lord, you might be surprised with who will give you knowledge and truth.